Never let your faith die in you. Dr. Joseph Murphy All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. The subconscious is amenable to suggestion even though the subject is unconscious. The deeper mind can receive and act upon the suggestion of the operator. In a sense, you could call such an incident the resurrection of the dead. It is the resurrection of health, faith, confidence, and vitality. We never let hope, joy, peace, love, and faith in God die in us. The state of mind is the real death. We should die to fear, ignorance, superstition, jealousy, in the hate, and other negatives. We should starve this stage to death by neglect. When fear dies, there's only room for faith. When hate dies, there's only room for love. When ignorance dies, there's only room for wisdom. Ignorance is the only sin in the world, and all the suffering is the consequence. Now, it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, Let us go over on the other side of the lake. And they launched forth, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him, and he woke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased. And there was a calm, 8th chapter of Luke 22nd, 24th verse. Here we are told how to control our emotions and heal the turbulent soul. This is a story of everyone, not just about a man in a ship. Because you are a ship yourself and you are always traveling somewhere in your mind. Aren't you? From the problem to the solution, yes, we are always traveling somewhere, psychologically. Maybe you're taking sea. Maybe you're taking a trip around the world. When beset with a difficulty, we seek an answer, a solution. When fearful, we must move to faith. The journey is always first in the mind. The body follows where the mind goes. The body cannot do anything or go any place unless the mind agrees and directs. It's your mind that always travels. Consciousness or awareness or the spirit within is the only power and the only mover. The consciousness of man is in perpetual motion. Our mind is always active, even when asleep. For nothing sleeps. Our disciples are our mental attitudes, moods, and faculties, which go with us wherever we go. You have 12 disciples, 12 faculties of minds. They are within you. We are here to discipline all these faculties, such as sight, imagination, feeling, and hearing, and so on. So, our disciples are these attitudes and moves, faculties, which go with us wherever we go. We must not let Jesus go to sleep in the boat. In order to understand the science of life in the Bible, you must regard Jesus, the boat, the wind, and the waves of the disciples as personifications of truths, faculties, moods, and thoughts of mankind. The Bible tells you how you get into trouble. It tells you how to get out of trouble. And all the characters in the Bible are states of mind within you. Your Jesus is your awareness of the divine power within you, enabling you to achieve, accomplish, and realize your objectives. Your knowledge of the laws of mind and your use of mental and spiritual laws is your savior or solution at all times, everywhere. You must not permit Jesus to sleep in the boat. It has the same meaning as Joshua, 
And Joshua means God is your savior. God is the solution. Your higher self, which means you must not go lightly along with the winds, opinions and fears of men. And the waves, melancholia, in the hatred, hostility and all that, these are the waves of the mass mind. The lake is your mind. When your mind is at peace, divine wisdom and divine ideas rise to the surface of your mind. The mind that stays on God feels his river of peace flowing through it and is full of poise, balance and serenity. The storm of wind represents the fear, terror and anguish which sees man at all times, causing him to vacillate, hesitate and tremble with anxiety or forwarding. He finds himself pulled two ways. His fear holds him back and prevents him from going forward. What do you do when fear and limitation seize your mind? Realize that when you are looking at your desire, you are looking at your savior or the solution in your mind. Your savior is always knocking at the door of your mind. Perhaps you're working for the government and you're saying, Oh, I can't make any more money. I've reached the maximum. That's the skill. You are now seeing the waters of confusion and doubt welling in you. Don't become submerged in these watery negative emotions. You're not limited by some scale set forth by a government bureau. Wake up your savior. Stir up the gift of God within you, as Paul says. Well, God in dwells you, walks and talks in you. God is the savior, the solution to all problems that only knows the answer. It has no problem. Therefore, you are your own savior. For the simple reason, supreme intelligence and boundless wisdom is within you. The modern physicist, the modern astrophysicist, the modern scientist knows that today. When he doesn't get an answer, he said, I didn't ask him the right way because he knows the answer is already there before he calls on for it. I realized, first of all, that the wish, desire, ideal plan or purpose you want to realize is definitely a reality of the mind. Though invisible, then realize that by uniting with your desire mentally, you can definitely and positively move over the turbulent, noisy and foaming waters of fear and hesitancy. That's called walking on the waters. Your faith is your feeling and your awareness. Then the thing you are praying for is a reality of the mind, in the form of an idea or desire. In as much as you thought about it, it is real. Trust the mental picture. It is real. Supposing you are working on an invention. Well, isn't the invention in your mind? Isn't it real? Does it a form, shape, or substance in another dimension of your mind? It can be seen by good psychic or sensitive or medium, even though you haven't committed to it to paper. But it's real in your mind. Isn't that the reality of it? That's why you can believe you have it now. Believe in the reality of the idea. It is so simple. If I'm writing a book, the book is in my mind. The chapter is in my mind. The characters are in my mind. The story someone told me is in my mind. Trust the mental picture. It is real. By contemplating its reality, you walk over the walls and you quiet the waves of fear. Your reality, your fear has abated because you know that when you focus your attention on your ideal, the creative power of the infinite flows through that focal point of attention. That's called touching the hem of his garment in biblical language. You are now stealing the waves. You have disciplined your mind. You have reasoned it out and you know that the idea is always real. The thought is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Your idea, your invention, your book, your play is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen, isn't it? We haven't seen it objectively, but we will. But it first has to be in your mind for everything comes out of the invisible. You believe in the possibility of the execution of the idea. That's what faith is. 
That's why the modern science scientist is the man of tremendous faith because he believes in the possibility of the execution of his idea, plan, or purpose. Keep your eyes in your goal, your objective. Know in your heart that there is an almighty power which supports you in all your ways. It never deserts you or leaves you. The subjective mind responds to your constructive thinking and feeling. Thereby, sustenance, strength, and power are given you to look down at the ways of fear, false beliefs, and error is to sink. Look up, contemplate your vision, and you go where your vision is. Turn your eyes to the hills from whence cometh your help, which your eyes stayed on God. There is no evil on your pathway. Your ordered mind, your faith and confidence enable you to walk over all the waters of life to greener pastures and still waters. True, you can command the winds and the waves and they will obey you because you have spiritual knowledge and awareness. And when he went forth to land, they met him out of the city, a certain man which had deviled a long time and wore no clothes, neither a boat at any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Most I beseech thee, torment me not, for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oft times it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and fetters, and he breaks the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him, and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the men and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they dead fed them, saw that was done, they fled and went and told it into the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus and found the men out of whom the devils were departed. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. This is from the 8th chapter, Luke 27, 35th verse. In reading this account of the Bible, it certainly reminds you of a psychic, manic, depressive type of psychosis. This is of course a form of mental derangement and is characterized by combativeness and destructivity. In the book of Mark, we have a story similar to the above, wherein the maniac is depicted as living among the tombs. Now, of course, all this is symbolic. The tombstones are a record of the dead, which means here that the man is living in the dead past nursing some old grudge or grievance or some resentment until it becomes an obsession in his mind. The madman is a man who was allowed or permitted. The gangster of remorse, hate, revenge, self-pity, hostility or vengeance to take charge of his reasoning, discriminating mind. These are real gangsters. They are the devils which bedevil us. For devil is the evil of evil, and evil is a life be, living life backwards, isn't it? We must never abdicate and let destructive negative emotion control us. Emotion follows thought, and that's why women in the Far East follow the men. They take these things literally, you see, with all kinds of absurd consequences. Emotions follow thoughts and by redirecting our thoughts life we control our emotional life man cannot visualize an emotion he has to construct the scene or event in his mind and relieve it thereby generating the emotion in psychiatry the doctors endeavor to correct the basic conflicts of the patient and give him a new orientation jesus addressing the insane man asked 
what is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. I knew a man in New York who feared that whenever he went into a bar that some evil entity was lurking in the shadows somewhere to take possession of him. He was told that sort of a hypnotic suggestion and the poor man believed it. He didn't know that man creates his own devils. I don't know whether he heard or read of such rank superstition, but he believed that any. I believe what who has told him. This belief governed his mind and caused all kinds of trouble. His subjective mind being dominated by this all potent but false suggestion gained control of his reasoning faculties and his reason abdicated. He had to experience the effects of such a false belief. This subjective false belief gained the ascendancy. He began to hear what he supposed to be spirit voices, not knowing he was talking to himself. He thought he was conversing with supernatural entities. He began to realize that his subconscious mind was simply acting in obedience to the false suggestions of fear and belief in spirits, which he had dwelt upon so long. The subconscious will assume a dozen different characters, whose collective name is Legion. This man went to a clergyman of his own particular belief, who used this ritual of the church to banish the tormentors. The procedure of the exorcist was, as you will readily conclude, a series of incantations or abjurations in the name of Jesus Christ, Mary, Joseph, saints, the apostles, and so on. The ritual ceremony and prayers of the exorcist instilled great faith and confidence in the subjective mind of this man. He was very receptive to the power of the church and the priest that cast out the so-called devils. The exorcist had confidence in his prayer therapy and his incantations in the holy water, in his day, beatitudes, and so forth. He had faith in what he was doing and faith in the ritual of the ceremony. This, coupled with the faith of the so-called possessed man, brought about a marvelous healing. The priceless ingredient in the whole process was simply faith, blind faith, yes, which brought about a basic change of the mental attitude of the patient that generated the healing. It was, as I said, blind faith or blind belief, which is certainly better than no faith at all. The bones of saints, certain waters, the incantations of a witch doctor may affect the deeper mind and cause a psychological transformation inducing faith and receptivity. The kahunas in the Hawaiian islands for years have banished so-called possession of devils by rituals and ceremonies. They heal various diseases the same way by spirit of forgiveness, you know, and also certain rituals and prayers and all that. And the doctor, I think his name was Dr. Long, the secret science is called the secret science, wrote a book on it. Divine healing or spiritual healing refers to the harmonious functioning of your conscious and subconscious mind. Our mind contains within its conscious and subconscious areas all our desires, characteristic, tendency, and urges with which, which we were born. Through the process of thinking, education, and experience, we have acquired many attitudes and habits of various kinds. Man is a creature of habit. When we begin to think intelligently, we deliberately reject all negative thoughts and opinions. When we fail to realize the desired ideal, we become full of fear and frustrations. This leads to unconscious impressions. These repressed urges and tendencies seek expression and an outlet. These destructive emotions manifest as inner conflicts. If these are not resolved, this organization of the mentally takes place and a completely distorted mind is the result. The subjective self in us is forever seeking to restore a balance in us. When our fears, tensions and conflicts become unbearable, the divine in us causes us to lose all consciousness of the problems. This is called insanity, 
the mind is completely deflected and detached from the strain and stress which causes the trouble. Imbalance results when we fail to choose between good and evil. We must not seek to solve our problem without divine wisdom and divine power. The mental derangement is simply the expression of deep repressed urges and conflicts which are too great to bear. A complex is a group of ideas highly charged with emotion seeking expression. If a man is full of hatred and prejudice, he is living in the tombs. For the tombs of the records of the dead, as you know many people are dwelling on the dead past, that old lawsuit, the blowout on the lonely road. Yes, the way he treated me years ago, the things he said and these things have happened 30, 40 years ago. Or the losses they had in, 20, in 1929, they're still talking about it. How they sold apples on the street and how they lost everything and how they had to go to the welfare department and so on. And they don't know, they are recreating the same condition because what you think about and imagine you create in your mind. Forgetting the things that are behind, reaching forward to the things which are before, Press towards the mark for the price of help, the happiness and peace of mind. Past is dead, but if you're dwelling on the past, you're living in the tomb like this man, cutting himself with stones. You reinfect yourself all over again, don't you? When you're talking about the losses of 99 and 69 and 29, you're thinking of loss and attracting more loss to yourself. So, when these negative states are exposed, your prejudices and hates and fears and jealousy, when they held up to the light of reason, they are dissipated because they can't stand the light of reason. The darkness hated the light. Light means intelligence, wisdom in Bible language. You are Jesus casting out the devils of hate, prejudice and jealousy and other negative conflicts. These obnoxious complexes are always hiding in the tomb which is your subconscious mind. When men refuse to acknowledge and hold up their prejudices, peace and grudges to the light of reasons, these ideas are forced down beneath the conscious level of personality and they are bound by the chains of fear, ignorance and various mental obsessions. When we nurse grudges, prejudices, revenge and remorse, they sink into the unconscious area of the mind like a smoldering fire ready to explode sooner or later. If we recognize these smoldering flames and handle them intelligently, we can be free and lead a normal life. Our emotional side of life is the driving power. It will be a good thing for all of us to take a good look at ourselves and see if the qualities we criticize so harshly in others are not in ourselves. When our stories stay, the insane man sat at the feet of the master. It depicts our understandings of the laws of the mind and how they work for and for mean understanding. When you are asked to pray for an insane man at a hospital, you can't get his cooperation. He has ceased to reason and discriminate. Actually, he is governed by the ghost of the subconscious that walk the gloomy galleries of his mind. When you pray for such a type person, it is necessary to do all the work yourself. He doesn't know what you're saying. He's completely insane. You have to convince yourself of his freedom, peace, harmony, and understanding. You don't see him behind bars. You are fasting the state on him. You could pray two or three times a day in this way. I now decree for John, for Joel, that the intelligent wisdom and peace of God are made manifest in him and he's free, radiant and happy. The joy of the Lord is his strength. He's ill illumined from an eye. He's now clothed in his right mind. The mind of God is the only real and eternal mind. This is his mind and he's poised, serene, calm, relaxed and at ease. He's full of faith in the infinite presence and power and in all good things. I decree this. I feel it and I picture him whole and in a perfect now. Thank you, Father. That be wonderful prayer for a man who's mentally in balance. By repeating these truths to yourself, realizing there is but one mind, you'll gradually, through frequent victory in your mind, reach your dominant conviction. And the man you're praying for 
we let the moment with that moment be healed. In a case such as the above, all healing has to be done at the mind of the practitioner or the minister, the priest, whatever the case might be. The practitioner must not at any time get power to symptoms or the prognosis of the case. He must rely exclusively on the operating principles of life, which forever responds to his faith and trust in it. For it is written, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord thy God. I will come and heal thee. I will restore health unto thee and heal thee of thy wound, sighed the Lord. When you pray for another, you leave the realm of time and space, of appearance and circumstances. You leave the verdict of the world and you judge righteous judgment. This means that you come to conclusion. The inner man's spiritual divine presence cannot be sick, confused or insane. Nothing could ever happen to the living spirit almighty, full of boundless wisdom, absolute peace, harmony, intelligence and divine love. The inner man has all of these qualities and attributes and the practitioner by meditating on the eternal life, perfect mind and absolute peace of the mental sick man dissipates and dissolves the mist of fixed opinions and earth thoughts that separate the man from God's river of peace and love. Become aware now of the almighty power which is invisible and intangible. Don't struggle in your prayer work. Then you will find the outer coat of painting will fade away. And the masterpiece will reveal and will be revealed in all his pristine glory. The story says the devils went out of the man, entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and were choked. Pigs were chosen symbolically as pigs decapitate themselves when swimming. Likewise, when we begin to swim psychologically in the waters of life and the holy omnipresence, our negative thoughts and confusions which our devils will die from want to believe. The past dies for you when you no longer think of the past. If you feel you can't accomplish, you cannot be healed. You're looking back at the past. You're living among the tombs. Don't listen to these messages of the past. The ideal of desire which beckons, which says to you, arise and go forth, achieve, is the Savior walking down the corridors of your own mind. Accept that ideal now. Make it as real as you possibly can because it is real. It's real in your mind. Walk as though you possessed it. You are now clothed in your right mind and a wave of peace moves over you because you realize that which you seek already is. This is why the Bible says, Lift up your eyes into the hills from whence cometh your help. It says also, Lift up your eyes, look on the fields for they already ripe to harvest. And of course, the hills are banana range. The hills means the presence of God in you. The living Spirit Almighty, the source of all wisdom, the source of all power. The Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. Steal the wheels of your mind and think of God and His love. Your emotions are controlled perfectly as you contemplate the river of peace flowing through you. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Your mind is at peace and reflects the heavenly lights and the heavenly truths. The wisdom of God anoints your intellect. It's a lamp onto your feet. It's a light upon your path. Your attention is focused on God's eternal verities all day long. Constantly claim that God's wisdom, truth and beauty rule and guide and govern you in all your ways. Whenever fear comes, realize that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. God in the midst of you is guiding you now. Mm -hmm.